Hey guys, welcome back. This is Mike Hermes at MH Tutorials and today we're going to do a tutorial on global illumination. Now, I get this question quite often and the question is what is that and what does it do and when do you use it and so forth. Okay, so that's what this tutorial is going to be about. All right. Now, in preparation for this tutorial, I created a, a simple scene which is basically just a cube and I cut out a window and I put in two little objects here a, a sphere and a cube inside a room and I went for a bookmark view so if I go to view bookmark room view it will go to the view that I want to work with okay which is this alright so if we're talking about lighting in general and lighting in Maya, um, like I said in one of my previous videos, it's very, very important that you scale to realistic size. All right. The reason for that is lights used in Maya contain information and specs that are based on real world scenarios. So if you create a 100 watt light bulb, for example, that will react as a 100 watt light bulb. If you place that in a tiny, tiny room, right, you're going to have a completely blown out scene. So this ceiling here is approximately 2.7 meters high. I think that's something like eight and a half feet or so. Uh, so when I put a light like that in this room, it's going to react more to the real world, right? Now, what does lighting do in general? If you have a light source on an object, and um, I'll just render this without adding any lights at all, okay? I'm just going to go to my render settings, and I'm going to choose V-Ray, but you can also do this in Mental Ray. No, no worries there. I'll just make sure that that's all reset. There we go. And we're just going to hit render. Okay. So you got this uh, pretty basic setup. Um, the reason you can see anything at all is because of the default lighting that is set up. Okay, but we are going to add some light source to this. All right. So we're going to start off by creating some outside sun in this case. Okay. I'm going to go to create lights. Uh, actually, I'm going to do that uh, in my render settings. Sorry, V-Ray. Okay, we're going to go to the V-Ray tab, we're going to go to V-Ray Sun and Sky, and we're going to select Create Sun. And again, if you're doing this in Mental Ray because you don't have V-Ray, for example, you can just, uh, you know, go into, and I'll show you, go to uh, Mental Ray, go to Indirect Lighting, and then Physical Sun and Sky. Okay, but I'm going to use V-Ray. Okay. So just make sure that I selected that window outliner. Yeah, there it is. Okay, cool. So I'm going to hit W and I'm going to move that light outside like that. Okay. And let's move that up and something like so. Okay, so the sunlight will be uh, pointing towards my window. All right, and another thing that I'm going to do is in my attribute editor with the, the V-Ray Sun Shape tab, I'm going to decrease the intensity to, let's say, 0 0.25, something like so. Okay, we're going to go back to our bookmark, like so, all right, and we're just going to do a quick render and see what happens. All right. Now you can see a couple of things. First of all, there's some light coming into the room and you got light on the floor, you got some light on your sphere and on your cube. Now this is the ideal scenario to explain what global illumination is. <clears throat> the light source is shining on the sphere and the cube, but in a real world what you would see is that light would bounce off of that object and illuminate objects around it. So, in short, light shining on this sphere would bounce off the sphere and indirectly illuminate, you know, the walls and the floor and so forth. And I'll show you by just selecting that. So we're just going to minimize this, right? We're going to go back to our render settings. Now, because I'm in using V-Ray, I got this GI tab here, okay, which stands for Global Illumination, and I'm going to switch that on okay if you're using mental ray and you go to mental ray like that 
and you go to indirect lighting, then you can do that right here, global illumination, and just click that on, okay? But I'm going to use, <coughs> excuse me, free ray. So that's selected, and we're going to do nothing else. <coughs> excuse me. We're just going to uh, do a quick render again, okay? Here we go. And already you can see a huge difference, okay? And we'll just have this render play out. Just give that a sec. You can already see that in the previous uh, render, you didn't see the uh, the walls pretty much. You saw a section of the sphere, you saw a part of the cube, but you didn't really see anything else, okay? Just by clicking on global illumination, you can already see that there's a lot more light in the room, all right? Now, <clears throat> the object doesn't only reflect uh, light off uh, to its surroundings, but also color. And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize this. And we're going to add some color to the sphere. So right-click, assign new material. I'm going to use a, uh, a V-Ray material. And I'm just going to turn this to kind of red, not too bright, something like so. And we'll take this guy, right-click, assign new material. Ray material. We'll do something blue. Bring that down a bit. Okay. We'll give the floor some color. So face. Assign new material. And we'll do um, I don't know. Uh, maybe a very very soft green color. Something like so. And we'll just uh, select the walls. Assign new material, and we'll take something that is not completely white, but pretty close. Okay. Now remember that we we didn't have any color going on in the room as far as um, color bouncing off of the objects. So we're going to do a re-render. Okay. Here we go. And we'll just uh, let this render play out. But already you can see that uh, if you look at the floor here, you can see that the red coming off the sphere is reflected on the floor plane right here. You can see the same going on here with the blue cube, right? And uh, I'll just uh, give this render a sec. And there we go. So you can see that there's a strong effect on the surroundings based on the uh, color of an object. And the brighter the color, the bigger the effect will be. If I made this ball bright red, you would pretty much see that the room will uh, turn red, pretty much. And I'll just uh, show you. We're going to go to object mode. We'll take that red sphere. I'm going to go to our material tab. Let's make this guy bright red okay and just for argument's sake i'm just going to get rid of our cube here for a sec and let's re-render this and you will see what the effect will be on the room okay a lot lot more light going on okay and again i'll just quickly pause for the render and there we go okay so just uh, to recap this when using lights in maya make sure that whatever you are illuminating is uh, at a realistic scale. So for example, you got a room, make sure it's the size of a room, okay? Now, global illumination will uh, make objects that are catching light also reflect light, but not only light, but also color, okay? So that in short is what global illumination is and uh, you know how you can use that. So if you've got any questions, let me know. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you would like to subscribe, that would be great. And see you guys next time. Bye.